Uh, meanwhile, we are very happy to see in the audience level our renowned professor, Professor Dr. Nojul Islam Sir, head of the department, Dhaka Medical College Hospital. Now, our second session, I would like to invite Dr. Enamul Kobe uh, to conduct his session regarding management of RPGN in vasculitis. Dr. Enamul Kobe. Dr. Enamul Kobe got 31 international publications. is the head of the department of Shweet Sheikh Abu Nasser Specialist Hospital, Khulna. Dr. Enamul Kobe. Respected chairs of the session, dear moderators, and my senior teachers and colleagues. Uh, first of all, I must thank Ganeshastu Department uh, to invite me from such a far away Shundurban to bring me here in this capital city to say a few words. And I am Dr. Enamul Kubir from Shweet Sheikh Abu Nasir Specialized Hospital, Khulna. And my today's talk is Management of RPGN in Vasculitis. Uh, you know, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is a clinical syndrome manifested by features of glomerular disease in the urine analysis and by progressive loss of kidney function over a short period of time. It is most commonly characterized morphologically by extensive crescent formation. The histopatholo this histopathological findings is a common uh, in the older adult presenting with acute nephritis. However, RPGN can present in any age group including children. Some pathologists restrict the crescenting glomerulonephritis to those biopsies with over 50% of crescents, while others use the term for biopsies with 10 to 15% of crescent as well. In general, biopsy with less than 10% crescents are not called crescentic and do not have any RPGN course or prognosis. It has long been appreciated that a common lesion in crescenting glomerulonephritis is the disruption or gap in the glomerular capillary wall or glomerular basement membrane or Bowman's capsule resulting in direct contact between the plasma and cells in the circulation and elements in the Bowman's space. Five mechanisms have been postulated. There may be direct effect of antibody alone. There may be terminal membrane rack complex. There may be role of neutrophil. Macrophage may also act as an effect of cells. And the fifth mechanism, cell-mediated immune reaction is increasingly well documented as in often particularly potential relevance to those cases with idiopathic RPGN where glomerular immunoglobin deposits are not seen. These gaps permit the entry into the moment space of coagulation factors and cellular elements, both of which promote screen formation. Cellular glomerular crescents are defined as two or more cell layers of proliferating cells in the moment's space and are the hallmark of inflammatory glomerular phytis and a histological marker of severe glomerular injury. Crescent can be circumferential or segmental. It seems that a variety of upstream immune mechanisms are involved including the deposition of autoantibodies, immune complexes and the activation of complement and recruitment of inflammatory cells. The term RPGN in the constant context of crescentic glomerulonephritis is usually due to one of the three broad mechanisms of glomerular injury. The broad um, uh, heading includes anti-GBM disease, immune complex mediated injury, and posse-immune necrotizing and crescentic GN. The term systemic vasculitis encompasses a group of disorder and characterized by inflammation and necrosis of blood vessels and all. All Chapman uh, uh, consensus conference divide this vasculitis into, into three broad groups, large arteries, medium sized arteries, and small sized arteries. Among the small sized arteries, Wegener's granulomatosis, microscopic polyangiitis, renal limited vasculitis, and Schwarzschild syndrome, all these three usually causes posimmune crescentic glomerulonephritis. The kidney may be affected in many forms of systemic vasculitis. Renal involvement is characterized by involvement of glomerular capillaries and occurs mainly in some types of vasculitis involving small vessels. If the renal vasculitis of secondary immune complex mediated glomerular disease like SLE, HSP, cryoglomerulinia, and bacterial endocarditis are excluded, four main types of primary vasculitis can be identified. These are granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Wegener's. Microscopic polyangiitis, eosinophilic glomerulonephritis with polyangiitis, formerly known as Schwarzschild syndrome, and posimmune necrotizing crescentic glomerulonephritis without systemic signs, and now considered as renal-limited variant. 
and this slide shows that ANC associated glomerulonephritis is by far the most common cause of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis in adults, especially older adults, and approximately 80% of crescentic glomerulonephritis is patient over 60 years of age is post-immune disease which is associated with ANCA in approximately 80% of the time. And TGBM disease is very uncommon in any age. Now, the classification of ANCA-associated glomerulonephritis. The proposed classification is based on glomerular pathology as assessed on light microscopy. For classification purpose, adequacy of tissue specimen and histopathological technique is essential. A minimum of 10 whole glomeruli is considered adequate. And the classification is four types. A sclerotic, focal, crescentic, and mixed class. This data shows that the percentage of patient who develop ESRD increases with ascending category from sclerotic to focal, as you can see also in the slide. A multiple uh, Cox regression analysis, including patient age, treatment, and baseline GFR, the classification demonstrates that the patient who present with crescentic anchor associated glomerulonephritis are at decreased risk for developing ESRD compared to those who present with sclerotic anchor associated vasculitis. Now, the evaluation and diagnosis. An accurate and urgent diagnosis is essential in patient presenting with clinical findings suggestive of RPGN. Patient should undergo appropriate serological test and unless contraindicated, renal biopsy. Serological test include ENCA, NTGBM disease, complement in ANA profiles, cryoglobulins, and others indicated from clinical history examination and renal biopsy. ENCA uh, may be done in two ways, immunofluorescence and ELIJA. But a new international consensus statement on ANCA testing recommends initial testing on suspected immune associated vasculitis includes immune assay for both MPO and RP3. Now, the uh, ANCA associated uh, vasculitis RPGN classification. The British Society of Rheumatology, the British Health Professionals for Rheumatology, Canadian Vasculitis Research Network, and Brazil, Brazilian Society of Rheumatology classify the disease at severe and non severe. Uh, severe uh, disease is manifested by severe alveolar hemorrhage, severe GI, cardiac, CNS, eye involvement, and other manifestation considered severe enough to require induction and treatment with severe renal failure. In contrast, who uh, don't have these features of severity are described as non-severe form. And the treatment is uh, divided into two phases, remission induction and uh, remission maintenance. Usually, uh, remission induction is induced with oral or IV uh, glucocorticoids and uh, IV or oral cyclophosphamide or along with rituximab. Here you can see the <laughs> dose of cyclophosphamide pulse uh, later, we have to discuss it more. Uh, in some cases, uh, if the patient presents with infection or persistent disease, uh, IV, IG could be used. And in refractory cases, there may be change in the treatment patterns or options. Now, there are some uh, few trials in uh, RPGN, Cyclops trial. This trial uh, just compared the oral and IV forms of cyc cyclophosphamide. Oral cyclophosphamide is induced with 2 mg per kg body weight with daily oral glucocorticoids 1 mg per kg body weight. And in uh, IV forms, 15 mg per kg uh, cyclophosphamide IV was given for 2 to 3 weeks with oral glucocorticoids. And this treatment is continued for at least 3 months or until remission was achieved. Then the remission was maintained with azathioprine for 2 mg per kg body weight and this uh, uh, trial of cyclops shows uh, in remission induction both the treatment are sim both the treatment arms are similar but the oral cyclophosphamide arm was associated with lower toxicity of cyclophosphamide rather than oral uh, forms Reduxibus trial shows the combination of reduxibus cyclophosphamide and with IV cyclophosphamide alone and this trial uh, shows almost equal result in both the arms. A plasma 
exchange in an option for this disease and if there is uh, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis with a high serum creatinine level uh, more than 5.7 and if there is diffuse alveolar hem hemorrhage plus exchange in an option and maintenance therapy is usually with less toxic immunosuppressive like azathioprine mycophenolate mofetil uh, uh, lefunilamide and uh, methotrexate new options in treatment the approval of abacocan as a treatment for ankyosusisis vascularly ap approved by fda and ema abacocan Abacopan offers a therapeutic option for the control of vasculitis in patients with anchor associated vascular acid that permits the reduction of avoidance of glucocorticoids with great improvements in quality of life and kidney function compared to 20 on x 60 mg per day penicillin tapringazim. Greatest renal benefit it was seen in those with lower GFR at baseline. Abacopan is administered as 30 mg orally twice daily, typically in combination with shorter reduced dose glucocorticoid regime in which glucocorticoids are tapered over 4 to 6 weeks depending upon the patient's response. Administer prophylaxis uh, to prevent pneumocystitis gyrovecti pneumonia in all patients immunosetting immunosuppressive therapy with cyclophosphamide and aerodiximab in combination with prednisolone at a dose more than 20 mg per day and discontinue pro prophylaxis when the dose of prednisolone is tapered to less than 5 to 10 mg per day. Most commonly recommended is Cotrim single stent daily or double stent every alternate day thrice weekly. Given the increased risk of infection, patients should receive as appropriate vaccination, including those against pneumococcus, influenza, and herpes zoster. Uh, prognosis and other outcomes uh, in terms of mortality. Untreated patients have a 90% mortality rate within two years. The long-term survival in patients with uh, and associated vasculitis has improved dramatically since the addition of cyclophosphine and rituximab to a therapeutic regime. The major cause of death in patient with and associated vasculitis are complications from immunosuppressive therapy or from the complications of underlying disease. Malignancy risk. The risk of malignancy has been described with non-melanoma non skin carcinoma, hematological malignancies, bladder, breast, lung, prostate and colorectal carcinoma. Approximately 20 to 30 percent of patients with uh, anchor associated vasculitis develop CF infection that requires hospitalization uh, with respiratory tract infection being the most common. Trials comparing different maintenance regime have reported similar rates of infection among patients treated with azathioprine, MTX, MMF, uh, rutiximab or oral cyclophosphamide. The incidence of ESKD among patients with anchor associated vasculitis has fallen over the first several decades. The principal determinants of a poor kidney outcome include more severe kidney dysfunction at presentation. Now, uh, some key points. Rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis is characterized by rapid deterioration of renal function. And rents or disruption in the glomerular capillary wall is the presenting features. Anchor associated uh, uh, cyto Anchor associated vasculitis is associated with high mortality and morbidity and the initial therapy of most patients with RPG and involves pulse methylprednisolone followed by daily oral prednisolone uh, or OLAR or IV cyclophosphamide or rituximab. Abacopan is an oral complement receptor inhibitor and the first therapy to be developed with anchor associated vasculitis as primary indication. In advocate study, the abacopan group had lower glucocoid toxicity and greater improvement in health related quality of life uh, and greatest renal benefit with lower GFR baseline. Thank you for patient sharing. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir.